Introduction about fabric face cover review. Let's first understand uh, the fabric setup. Basically, the setting up of uh, the hardware for the AP controller. So, before we get into the ACF fabric, it is important for us to understand how it is initialized. All the AP controllers are basically based on Cisco's UCSC220 M3 or uh, M4 servers. At your screen, you are watching at the console for the same server. Before setting setting up uh, AP controller, we need to initialize the hardware as well. Here we are configuring the CMC IP, which is basically the remote management IP for the rack mount server. This helps us get into the console, or you can say the AP console remotely, even when the AP GUI is not available for some reason. During the boot process, we see this page where you need to press F8 on your keyboard where you'll uh, get the options to set up the CIM CIP for the server. Please mind me mentioning server yet and not controller. We are currently setting up the server to support the AP controller. This screen gives, uh, this uh, screen basically opens when you press F8 on the previous screen. We do not have to alter any other settings uh, than the ones in the red box. Than the ones in the red box. If you wish to understand the purpose of other settings on the screen, uh, try to Google initial server setup for C220 server. You'll, you'll get to understand what all these uh, other settings are, are uh, how they are relevant. So after providing in the suitable details, uh, simply press F10 to save and, uh, and then, then, then exit. Now after you have configured the CMC IP configuration for the server, you would be able to remotely manage the server using the GUI page, something like this. I won't go into details for all the tabs for all the tabs for this GUI as it is not relevant for now in regard to ACI fabric initialization. Now to initialize ACI fabric we need to open the console. For this click on the launch KVM console. the fabric initial setup script. After launching the KVM console, you'll see the following screen. Here, all the configurations are already put in to show you what all we need to uh, know during the fabric initialization. So it will basically ask us uh, the following details. Okay, number one, fabric name. This is the name for the fabric and uh, this is relevant when you have multiple ACI fabrics uh, so that you could uh, you know make sure to use a name which will help you distinguish your different fabrics then second comes the fabric ID this is more or less the same thing as the fabric name just a distinguishing name uh, than the other fabrics number three number of active uh, controllers in the fabric as we can see we can have any number of controllers between one to nine but it is recommended to have uh, three controllers in the fabric why we'll get the answer to this in our upcoming slides so for now we have to mention the number of AP controllers we have put in in our ACF fabric now number four comes the pod ID if this is your first fabric just put in one this comes into play when you have a multi-pod environment this again will come in detail in the later slides now comes the controller id where is it 
now comes the controller ID this would be the ID for the controller you are currently configuring say if you are setting up the second controller out of three of them you would mention here two for controller number two now comes the controller name this again is somewhat same as uh, the ID that we discussed about so for second controller you can name it like uh, APIC2 or as per your suitability to easier understand the ACI uh, APIC DC location in your enterprise infrastructure. So number seven, here it asks for the address pool for the tap addresses and uh, this tap. This tap address is basically the internal endpoint address and is the internal ACI fabric IP addresses which it uses for internal routing and other purposes. These are used with the VXLAN setup inside the fabric. We will understand this deeper in our later chapters. While giving this pool, we have to make sure this pool is not being utilized anywhere else in your environment okay so now comes the infrastructure VLAN this is again for internal VLAN communication we only need this uh, one VLAN as it would be used with VXLAN to scale better now there is a very important point to take care of while choosing the VLAN ID what is that If you are using a Cisco UCS solution for servers within your environment, uh, which might be connecting to ACI APIC directly or indirectly, you may want to take care of not using VLAN uh, 3968-4047, as this range of VLANs is also reserved for internal uses for uh, UCS. So the VLANs that I'm talking about is three. 968 and I'm sorry not and it's 2 4047 okay so this range of VLAN uh, avoid using it if you're using UC solutions uh, with the rest of fabric now uh, the next would be the bridge domain multicast address bridge domain multicast address uh, this BD stands for the bridge domain which in case of ACI is essentially a container for subnets all of your endpoint groups will be associated with a bridge domain in the ACI fabric and some traffic behavior for wedding will be dictated in how these bridge domain configurations are done okay we will we'll go into details in, in uh, in the upcoming slides so first uh, you'll, you'll get to know better about all these things so uh, the next comes the out of band management configuration the out of band management is pretty simple and you have probably configured this type of thing dozens of times so out of band simply means that it's uh, not in the ACF fabric but using outside network likely a dedicated management network you can use in band management as well if you like for this you need an IP address, default gateway and speed specifications, that's it. And speed specifications which uh, usually be auto to full duplex. Then uh, you need to enter the strong password which would be later used under, uh, under admin tab. To log in into the fabric GUI. Now it will show you the summary for the configuration inputs that you have mentioned in the previous screen. So the most important point to be noticed here is the warning at the at the bottom of the slide. It says that whatever you have configured till now cannot be changed later. 
the setup is permanent until or unless completely wiped off in the slide I have uh, simply summarized quick points that have already been described earlier so just take a minute and pause the video and just just go through the uh, summary points till now now let's understand how fabric discovery occurs basically the sequence of events that take place uh, when when all the components are, are talking have started to talk to each other and the discovery finally starts this chapter uh, basically covers the discovery process for an ACI fabric beginning with an overview of the actions that happen and uh, verification steps used to confirm that a functioning fabric exists and is got in this discovery process a fabric node is considered active when the epic and node can exchange heartbeats through through uh, intra fabric messaging process and uh, that's I would call them as DME processes okay intra fabric messaging processes the IFM processes is also used by the APIC to push policy to fabric leaf nodes whenever we'll be doing the APIC, uh, APIC configuration in the GUI all these GUI settings will be transferred to the leaf nodes through this IFM processes we will we'll, uh, give a very quick look over these IFM processes uh, and then just a few slides from now the IFM processes is also used by okay so uh, fabric discovery happens in three stages now the leaf node directly connected to the APIC is discovered at the first stage the second stage of discovery brings in the spines connected to that initial seed leaf then the third stage process is the discovery of the other leaf nodes and the apex in the cluster the diagram illustrates the discovery process for switches that are directly connected to the apex the steps are number one link layer discovery protocol or uh, neighbor discovery which is the LLDP then is uh, I'm sorry I skipped then is the eternal endpoint IP address assignment to the node let's do this this way so first was uh, the LLDP neighborship the LLDP occurs between these things which are connecting from APIC to leaf, leaf to spine, all these they talk to each other, they discover each other over LLDP then the uh, tunnel endpoint IP assignment to the node is done uh, node software version upgrade if necessary if there is any leaf or spine which is out of the firmware version of the current uh, fabric setup it automatically synchronizes its uh, firmware upgrade from the from the complete fabric policy element IFM setup so that also goes uh, internally now let's see and understand the step-by-step -step fabric discovery process uh, that you could see in the GUI Now let's see and understand the step-by-step -step, uh, fabric discovery process that you could see in the GUI. First, the fabric uh, is uh, discovered with leaf, which is you know, uh, which is directly connected to the APIC controller. Now, in the next step, two activities occur. One is the assignment of uh, node ID. One is the assignment of node ID. node name and tap address to the leaf along with the discovery of uh, two other spines 
which are connected directly to this node. After this, the spines are allocated, the node IDs. The node names and their respective tap addresses from the tap pool that we have given initialization during the initialization process along with the discovery of uh, the other two leaf switches through those spines this process continues till all the nodes are discovered and allocated respective resources the three apex from the uh, the three apex from the cluster and behave is one unit for the complete fabric we can check the overall health for the complete cluster uh, as shown in the figure it shows fully fit in service with their tap ips and operational status available Just in the continuation, there is a small point to be considered, and that is to make sure to set the NIC. I'm sorry. And that is to make sure to set the NIC mode to dedicated. For more information on this, uh, just Google about this configuration setting in the server. This is uh, related to more of a management connectivity for the CIMC. Uh, if it should be a dedicated mode or a shared mode. 